I was so excited for this game. I couldn't wait for the knockout stages of the Champions League. And it feels like genuinely months. It feels like months ago we played the group stages. And I guess technically it has been a while, but so excited for this game. And then that happened. I mean, it was such a dead game, wasn't it? I'm, I'm, I'm honest with you guys always. I watch every Arsenal game, but I can't help it tonight. I was very easily distracted browsing Twitter and scrolling Instagram and all this stuff because the game just... Oh, um, Porto were the better side. And I think a 1-0 win to Porto is pretty fair. Being totally upfront with you guys. Obviously, I think Arsenal should be doing better. And I think Porto can do better as well. I think both teams really kind of just... I don't know. It just felt very lethargic. I, I don't know. I think part of the problem is Arsenal have won two games in a row. 11-0 if you combine the two results. It's difficult to keep that going. So, look, I wasn't expecting us to fly to Portugal and smash them 5-0. But I wasn't expecting to lose. Now, I would have taken a 0-0 draw. And it looked pretty certain that's what we were going to get. And then in the 94th minute, Martinelli, for some ridiculous reason decides to smash the ball give it away and then they score I'm not blaming just Martinelli but you've got to be smarter there hold the ball because a nil-nil draw in the Champions League knockout stages away from home that's fine that's not not a bad result and, and by the way this isn't a terrible result I think we'll still be okay I think Declan Rice could have closed him down better um Galeno is that how you say his name Ga Galeno looks like a tidy player um and maybe if Raya was six foot five, he saves it. But um, we didn't create enough. And, and the chances we did create, we obviously didn't execute them well enough. And I think that's zero shots on target tonight. We can go through the stats here. I mean, you can see momentum wise, we, we have dominated the game and that was to be expected, I think. But this, this is poor. This is really poor. And you're telling me it, it's seven years since we're in this competition 14 years since we've made it further than the knockout stages, I think I, I read. And it's it's just, it's ridiculous, isn't it? And um, that's what we get. It just feels like this club, no matter what, will disappoint you in Europe. Doesn't matter if it's Europa League, doesn't matter if it's Champions League. I hope we never play in the Conference League. But uh, it was just another disappointing game in the Champions League. And the group stage always seems to be okay. Because that's the uh, quote unquote easy part. But this this was just poor. It wasn't a good game at all. And to make one change as well, stubborn. Who do you bring on? I think Nketiah might have added something. I, I, I don't know. Maybe not. Reese Nelson, Fabio Vieira coming back from injury probably wasn't quite ready. Elneny, Cedric. We've got a couple of new faces on the bench. Sweet. Heaven. It's an interesting name, isn't it? Aiden Heaven. Unless it's Heaven. It's something cool like that. <laughs> I don't know, guys. It's, it's just disappointing. But they probably just about edged it. So it is what it is, isn't it? And that, of course, means when we play them at the Emirates next time, we now have to really go for it and make sure that we score a couple of goals. We can't just get an easy 1-0 win. Away goals, of course, is no longer a thing. And do you know what? I, I always said, and I remember it very clearly, it might have been maybe a year or two ago before they removed it, that I wanted them to get rid of away goals because it just felt so cruel when you get knocked out on away goals. But then here I am thinking away goals is... I'm actually kind of missing it tonight. I think if, if away goals were a thing, maybe we would have been pushing a bit harder. It did feel like we were just taking it slow, being safe, because it doesn't have the same... Um, I guess that, that same feeling, when you get an away goal, you think, oh, that's big. That's like one and a half goals. And it's not a thing anymore. So I'm not saying it would have changed much, but it did feel like back then when you went away from home, it almost, almost didn't matter if you got beat by a goal, as long as you scored, because an away goal was so big, you could then get a simple 1-0 win at home or whatever, and you're through. I kind of missed that. <laughs> um, if we could have a rule where some seasons after the game's finished, we can apply it, then that'd be great. <laughs> um, let's go through the team. Raya, I mean, his height 
I, I can't believe I'm talking about it. Look, I'm not exactly a giant human being. I'm like just under six foot one, okay? But I think I could play in goal. Raya, I believe, is six foot. I might be wrong. He might be six one. But he looks 5'10 in this in this Arsenal team. He's so short for a goalkeeper. And I do wonder sometimes if it lets him down. Because I mean, it's so easy to say, but he saves that if he's just a little bit longer. <laughs> um, of course, it comes down to positioning. And he's been pretty flawless recently. So I'm not going to be angry at him. But it is something that I, I often wonder, you know... You, it's quite nice having a huge goalkeeper because guess what? Having longer limbs means you've got more of a chance of reaching shots. It is just science. Ben White was stepping stepping into midfield today. He was doing a Zinchenko on that right side. It, it literally felt like we were just doing the opposite. I think he did all right. You know, I think Ben White had a solid game. Didn't do anything wrong per se. But there were a few misplaced passes. And I think everyone was doing that in the first half. Even the Porto players. Saliba giving the ball away. Gabriel giving the ball away. Kivior was good. I, I definitely like the look of Kivior more, the more I see him. Havertz and Trossard were kind of swapping between striker and centre mid or the, the false nine role, I guess. Declan Rice has been given a 7.4 here. And I feel like this might be the first time he hasn't been one of the top performers, but has got the highest rating. I, I thought Declan Rice was a bit questionable at times tonight, giving away the ball, these long range passes, which are normally so perfect and oh weighted perfectly it just didn't he wasn't pulling it off tonight um but he was still good you know it's it's very very difficult to see a poor performance from rice and it was by no means poor just not to his usual standard and to get the yellow card in the first 80 seconds or whatever it was obviously it wasn't just his fault Saliba gave him a pass and he was distracted talking to Saka I think and he's just lunged in and got a yellow card that's obviously affected his ability to then play that rock solid DM role for the rest of the game. Erdegaard was quiet today. A couple of attempts to control the ball and it would just get away from him. And there was a lovely incisive pass from Rice. He cut through the midfield and into the defence. And all Erdegaard had to do was control it and turn. And maybe we could have made something out of it. And he just miscontrolled it. And you could see the pain in all the players' eyes. Like, no, Martin, how could you? You're normally so good at that. Saka, quiet. Trossard, quiet. Martinelli, Martinelli, naive at the end. It is just naivety. All we've got to do is keep the ball, take a nil-nil home to the Emirates. It's a it's a good result. It's not great. It's good. Gives away the ball and um, we concede from it and he will be getting an earful. I'm sure Arteta will be saying to him, wake up. If anything, it's kind of a grow up, mature, because that is such a a thing to do as, as as a young player, which he is, of course, still a very young player. Um, and again, doing his usual running, head down, not getting a good ball in the box or whatever. But again, hard to criticise him when he's been pretty good recently. I just think today was another example of maybe the not so good Martinelli. And, and funnily enough, actually, a friend of mine, Zach, if you're watching, it was you actually who, who put something in Discord. It was like, a, who's the most overrated player, underrated player, Best player, worst player at Arsenal. When it came to overrated player, I found it quite difficult. But my answer eventually was Martinelli. And what, what, when I say overrated, I don't mean by the general football planet, the community of football. I mean as Arsenal fans. I think a lot of Arsenal fans think Martinelli is like the next best thing. And I, he's great. He's a fantastic young footballer, but he's so raw. I think he he is actually very slightly overrated by Arsenal fans. I don't think he's as good as we make him out to be. And I think if he was playing in other teams, you'd see it more. It's because he's ours that you love him. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm just making a point that there aren't many players that I think are overrated at Arsenal. There are a couple that maybe neutrals and other supporters would say are overrated. But within our own fan base, I think we're, we're quite... We're quite um, fair, but when it comes to Martinelli, I do I do think he gets away with quite shoddy play sometimes. And I've talked about the scanning thing and and the not getting his head up when dribbling. It's such an important part of football. And and if I was a coach, I'd be trying to teach young players this that receiving the ball 
even before, you've got to be looking around you. It's taking in the environment and making sure you're you're aware where all your teammates are. And if you're a, a player that is relying on dribbling and getting down the wing like Martinelli is, don't get your head down when you're dribbling. You know where the ball is naturally. If you're gifted, you know. Look up. You've got to look at your options. And he does do it. I'm not saying he never does it. Of course not. But there are so many occasions where Martinelli gets on the ball and he's just got his head down and he just goes down the line and it can work but I think that's how he's going to improve his game got a couple of um, tweets I wanted to show you guys Arsenal failed to record a shot on target in a Champions League match for the first time since March 2011 I was four years old when that happened <laughs> not quite Opta this was an interesting one so their very late goal was the uh, the first ever 90th minute winning goal conceded by Arsenal in a Champions League game and Porto's Latest winner on record from 0304, excluding extra time. Yeah, they scored late. We conceded late. Doesn't happen very often. So it is one of those things, guys. It's going to be a massive game when they come back. Up next for Arsenal is, of course, Newcastle. We've got Sheffield United and Brentford. And then the return on the 12th of March. That is going to be a big, big game. I think we'll make it through. And I'll, I'll happily put a prediction out there now. 3-1 at the Emirates. We will score goals. This this was a bit of a weird one, I think. A bit of a an anomaly. Not getting a shot on target is not very Arsenal. Um, at least we were having shots. That's the thing. I would have been worried if we weren't creating anything, but I think this goes down as a really just poor performance on the night. We go again. Newcastle on Saturday in the evening. That's going to be an interesting game. Sheffield United and Brentford, we should be winning both of those. I, I think we'll win the next three before we get into that Porto game. Hopefully anyway. Thank you for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.